Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Bella Harmony. Today we're going to be talking about how you avoid being the squirrel of the bunch. What do I mean by squirrel? For those of you who are not familiar with it, in cycling lingo, when you're called a squirrel, it's not a flattery. You know how squirrels are? They're all over the place. If you're one of those riders, nobody wants to be near you. That means you're not smooth. You're jumpy, jerky, you scare everybody. And so, a lot of inexperienced riders are oftentimes referred to as squirrels. And so it's not a compliment. And uh, so in lieu of referring to somebody as a squirrel, I've always thought that it was better to find out whether this person was aware as to why they rode the way they did. What brought this idea to mind for doing this video was one of our legends, uh, Simmons Cal Cycling, his YouTube name now, and uh, I will read what he said. The last video I loaded, this last ride on Saturday, he said, I noticed in segment 1453, 14 colon 53, the timestamp, you grabbed your water bottle while maintaining your cadence. How do you do that without veering all over the road? Very valid question. I thought about it for a while. I didn't want, it would take a long paragraph to reply. There's too much involved. So I just said, practice consistently. Now, yes, you can practice to be smooth all you want. Where does the, the gist of it come from? Fit. It starts there. That's the reason I, I put that on this banner when I designed the banner for the channel. It all comes back to fit. Because where do you steer the bike from? Everybody thinks it's the, the front. You steer your bicycle from here. You turn with the front. When you're in the group, you don't want to turn. You want to drift. You glide. How do you do that? You use your hips. In order to be able to do that, your bike must fit you because if you're not comfortable in your saddle, you're not going to want to stay on that saddle enough for it. Plus, plus you won't have enough weight on it. To, want to be in the position to move the bike. You move the bike with your hips. Try it the next time you're out. Look at a rock or something and then move the bike away from it using your hips. That's how you control your bicycle is here. You steer and guide the bicycle here. So what Cal saw at 1453 in the video, which is throughout the video, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, um, I took this left hand, I was riding like this, and I took this left hand, which I always do, and I put it near the stem. That gives you the most control when you're riding one-handed. Near the stem keeps the bike more stable, the front wheel more stable, because that's your most vulnerable uh, part of the bike. So you put that there for stability. I reached down for my water bottle, I took a drink, like I told I always do, I tilted the bottle up so my, so my, my head position did not change. Drank while pedaling. Most inexperienced riders cannot do that without the cessation of their pedaling. Well, what happens if you're in the bunch and you stop pedaling? People are coming up on you. So then they got to veer off or, or slow down or catch some wind, whatever. You need to practice to be smooth enough to where you can do things on the bicycle while you're still pedaling. So that's what he's, he's talking about. Like, how did you not veer all over the road? Two reasons. My hip didn't move. I kept my hip in the same position. Then I moved my hand next to the stem to stabilize that front wheel because that's the most unstable part of the bike. And I can do anything I want. It's the same thing if you're doing free, uh, no hands riding. That's, that's a great way to explain it. Think about no hands riding. I did a video on that. I will put the link here for those of you who want to review that. When you're riding no hands, think about it. You have nothing on the front wheel. You're sitting. What do you think is keeping the bike stable? Other than your momentum, it's your hip that you use to guide the bike. So when you're riding with your hands on the bars, you're still using your hip. So in the group, when you want to move to the left of someone, you don't use the steering. You move your hip. So your bike end up drifting, drifting. So everyone behind you now will relax because they know that you do everything smoothly. You're not steering to the left. That's the key. And that's what a lot of people don't understand when they're new to the sport. Coupled with the fact that when your saddle is too high, 
You have no control with your hips because you don't want to be on the saddle anyway because your butt hurts. Or you got saddle sores because of the discomfort of the position. Or if your stem is too short, let's say, and you're leaning on it because your saddle's tilted down. Or the stem too long, you're putting weight on it. So in other words, when your fit is not properly dialed into where you're comfortable on the bicycle, it's hard to steer and hold a straight line. I even talked about when I met Paul. Paul had a saddle that was almost five centimeters too high. We saw almost two inches. That's quite a bit, okay? He was sitting high and bunched up. So his upper body had all this weight on the bars and he wasn't comfortable here. We went out for a ride and he bumped me literally as we were riding, just side by side. And I knew because his bike was not tracking very well. Think about it this way in your car. If you put a death grip on the steering wheel, you don't really have that great of a control. Plus, you'll get white knuckled. You know? So, you need to be fitted right and you need to practice steering with your hips because you need to be able to do different things on the bike other than just ride. I mean, you should have the ability to take a jacket out of your back and put it on. Conditions allowing, meaning it's not super windy. You should be able to wear a jacket. Take off a jacket while riding. I can do all that. That comes with practice. That starts with you being comfortable on your bike. The more comfortable you are on your bike, people have more confidence riding close to you. So, in order to not be the squirrel, first thing, make sure your fit is right. Second thing, concentrate and practice doing things on the bike without changing your line. And that's what Cal was asking about. And so I wanted to hurry up and make this video because the main thing it starts with is the fit. You get your fit right and then you get out there and you practice. And I, this is what I could not put in a response to his comment. It would just would, you know, it just would not have translated very well. So I decided to make this video to help everyone out there understand. There are experienced riders who have ridden for years that because of a bad fit, they're not very stable. When you have a lot of weight on your bars, you're twitchy. So you turn around and the bike does an S. Just to turn around and look, the bike does an S. You've probably seen that. So if you're one of those riders, you need to revisit the fact that that saddle being down is putting all the weight on your bars. When you have weight on the front wheel, as soon as your position changes, the front wheel goes the opposite way. You look this way and the bike goes that way because you got weight on it. When there's no weight on it, the front wheel doesn't go anywhere. So when you see people riding like that, it's a bad fit coupled with lack of experience because if they had the experience, they would have worked on their fit. That means they haven't ridden long enough or they're not aware that they're not supposed to be that uncomfortable. So that's where it comes from. So to answer your question, Cal, I'm able to do that because my fit has been dialed in over the years. Didn't happen overnight. And secondly, I actively work on being smooth when I'm doing other things like eating. You saw that. You even saw it. I put the wrapper under here. I open my food. You should be able to do all of that on the bike but without your line changing. And believe it or not, there are many riders, because they're uncomfortable doing that, they'll ride without drinking. Yeah, they're strong, but they don't drink, and then eventually they overheat. Yeah, it may seem unbelievable. There are people, there are a lot of riders who are uncomfortable standing. So what happens? They ride all day seated. They never relieve their lower back or change the, the position of how their muscles are working. That's how some people are blown away. How can you spend three and a half hours on a bike? Well, the bike's comfortable. You can spend eight hours on a bike. So that, that's where it comes from, you know. So, you know, th this, this topic is kind of endless. So I'm going to wrap up by saying that in order for you to look and feel right, you have to start with fit. It doesn't matter whether you're riding a bicycle or running a road race like a runner. Your shoes need to fit you. The bike needs to fit you. And then it will become an extension of your body. So that's what he saw. This was, the bike is a part of my body. So when I reach for a bottle, my body doesn't freak out. I'm just reaching for a bottle. I'm not doing anything else. And so that's where it comes from. So I just wanted to, to address that in this video and I hope this helps some of you. Get out there, continue to get your case in. And if you can't find a fitter that you trust, go to our website, we offer remote fit. We'll support you 
and get you comfortable on your bike. 